Hello, hello! My name is Callista and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition. In the last episode, we got to speak with the council and they once again did nothing. I'd like to say that that was a surprise, but no. Note that completely stacks with everything the council have done so far. Now, the Torian councillor did offer up an olive branch. He said, hello there. You're also, hello. And um, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. Yes, the Torian councillor did offer up an olive branch. If we can go and get their Primarch, they're going to be more likely to support us. So, of course, we're going to go do that. Oh, hello, ma'am. Ma'am? We have the discussion, young lady. You're to call me Teresa. Maybe my son didn't have the chance to marry you because of this damn war. But you're still family in my book. Nothing will ever change that. I... Of course, Teresa. I'll come back later during your break if you want. Treat you to lunch. What do you say? I would love that, Teresa. Thank you. Oh... Oh, I... <laughs> that breaks my heart. That breaks my literal heart. I... The last time we overheard their conversation, the, the old woman said, oh, you remind me of my daughter-in-law. So she, she clearly has issues. She has issues with her memory. And now she thinks that this lady is... A, well, it should be her daughter-in-law. Oh, my God. The voice actress for the receptionist is doing a very good job. You could you could hear how how distressed and how empathetic she she feels for this lady. I, I again again this isn't part of your job description. You could tell this woman to piss off. But the fact that she's being so kind about all of this, I again thank you. Thank you for being kind. I oh. I hope that lady's son is okay. I hope he's doing all right. And the final thing will be like, you know, like, oh, let me introduce you to this receptionist son. And, you know, it's a nice, happy reunion. There won't be a happy reunion. I know there won't, but I can hope. Commander Shepard. Commander, the people of the Alliance have questions. I. Commander Shepard. Kalisa bent seen in Al Jelani. Isn't it true that you were on Earth when the Reapers attacked? How do you justify running away while millions of people on Earth die? Is that the best we can expect from the Alliance? I came to get help for Earth. For everyone. What about all the people suffering while you play politics with the Council? What about them? How can you stand here while our families die? What are you going to do? Kalisa? We're doing everything we can. Before they cut the feeds, there were so many dead. I'm gonna stop the Reapers or die trying, but I need your help. Keep asking the hard questions. Don't let the Council forget about Earth. I will. Thank you, Commander. We haven't always seen eye to eye, but I'm glad you're on our side. Yes. Oh shit, she's a war ass. Okay. Okay, so go get him, Kalisa. Go get him. Fuck up the council. They're bitches. Do it, girl. Do it. Oh, hell yeah. Hey, Commander. Liara told me the council's not interested in helping us. Something like that. <laughs> Why would they? Look at this place. There's no war here. People are whispering about it. They're talking about it, but they don't really believe it. Mm, I, I get the feeling that you don't exactly feel at home here. I take it this is your first time here with the elite of the galaxy. I've been to the Citadel, but never up here on the Presidium. It's not right. It looks pretty, calm and peaceful, but it's not right. It's all just an illusion. It was peaceful, once. But was it? Really? I mean, when push comes to shove, they're just gonna turtle up. Oh, but don't hit them too, right? 
They'd rather believe in this than face the truth. I mean... <sighs> Here's the thing, for the vast majority of people here, this is going to be hard to believe because the vast majority are just regular people. The council should know better. The council are responsible for their respective species and they should know better. But for the vast majority of people who are, you know, maybe, maybe they own a store, maybe they're part of the janitorial crew, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe... Maybe they're receptionists. You know, the, the vast majority of people here are just regular ass people. Regular people who are far away from the fighting, who only ever really hear about it in news vids that they probably turn off because that shit's depressing. It is hard to believe. If you don't see it, it's hard to believe. I can hardly believe it myself. Like everything back on Earth was some kind of nightmare. Yeah. That's what I hate most. It's like this place wants you to forget that. So, you still want to go back to Earth? Hell yeah, but... But? You were right. So was Anderson. We can't stop them alone. Besides, looks like you're going to have your hands full convincing these pendejo politicians to help us. And I'm up for it. Whatever it takes. Glad to hear it. I'm going to head down to some of the lower levels where they keep it real. You got some spare time? You should come and find me. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, nice. Is under attack, is nice, I hope that James enjoys his time on the lower wards. And again, any any gossip. Any gossip at all. To oh, okay. Of let's let's head out. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Please okay, so we the destination. Okay, that's that's very nice elevator lady. Um yeah, so we can't go down to the lower ward. So yeah, let's Let's just head straight back to the docks. No, no oh my god, I see a keeper. I said I said I was going to have a reaction every single time. Again, I'm just checking if anyone wants to talk to me. Um yeah, I am going to have a reaction every single time I see a keeper. I love them. And yet there were people around here. So you're just silent behind enemy lines until the war is over? No, they've got us on rotation. We're mostly in fortified holding zones until strike teams clear an area. Then we come in and set up medical bunkers and supply depots. And then the main fleet comes in to occupy. I'm not wearing commando leather, honey. What does that mean? We'll be perfectly safe. <laughs> they don't put engineers on the front lines. But you won't be able to talk to us. I'm I'm sorry. I stopped listening. We got shoved by a keep. If this were anyone else, I'd be pissed. But because it's you, I'll accept it. He he basically gave us a hug. Maybe he was saying thank you for the keeper union. You sorted out my dental. Thank you. I'm so having a moment. Yes, it's stupid. I don't care. I love them. It's a dumb joke, but I find it amusing. Don't judge me. Also, I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, you two. Oh, okay. I'm calm. I'm go yeah. Let's return to the Normandy. <laughs> This can can we move any faster? No, this is this is literally it. I I'm a I'm a wee bit shocked. That, what, this is cool. I have no idea what is happening, but this is cool.
no, no, hold up, hold up. Small child, please don't run too quickly. Where did, okay, over there. Over there, come on, Naomi. I, I'd say move those legs, but you, she really can't. She really can't, I, okay, I'm, I'm gonna assume this is some kind of dream state. forwarding the Turian Counselor information on the Prothean device. It can't be built without Council support, but he's not budging until their Primarch is safe. I know. Are you alright? Okay, so a nightmare. Um... Oh, in... Interesting that she's dreaming of the child. Then again, then again, the child is really the one face that she can kind of attach to this tragedy. And that's that's a thought. So she's she was earthbound for six months. We've we've been told there is six months between the end of Mass Effect 2 and the beginning of Mass Effect 3. My question is, where has she been living? Does she have her own apartment or was she in some kind of, you know, alliance housing? And was that where we first met her because if that's the case she probably saw that kid a lot i don't know if that was a park where the kid was playing or if it was some kind of rooftop garden you know on a um on an apartment block but if he was local and he regularly went to that park and that was where she was living she probably saw him playing an awful lot in which case it makes complete sense that you're like this is a kid she's seen a lot you know, she's seen him a lot from afar. She manages to find him in a vent, but he, he flees before she can get him to safety. She thinks, oh shit, I, I see him getting onto one of the shuttles. He's safe. Big fuck off laser beam comes down. He's dead. It makes sense that she'd start ascribing this child's face to the tragedy. Okay, um... Yeah, we, we've been better. I didn't get what you'd call a good night's rest. There's more to it than that, isn't there? What's really bothering you? Yeah, it's... We, we left so much behind. And I do think that part of Naomi would feel... Because she, she has a strong connection to us. It's where she was born. It's where she was raised. Everything that made her, or at least the vast majority of what makes her the woman she is today is all because of Earth. And she left it behind. I do think a strong part of her would be thinking, I should be back there. I should be fighting. When the Reapers hit, I could hear people screaming in the streets below me. We left a lot of them behind. There's no way for you to save them all. But I know you're doing everything you can, and you'll get back there in time to help. I hope you're right. Don't blame yourself, Commander. Commander Shepard, I'm Specialist... Oh, uh, I, I beg your pardon. I thought you were alone. I was just leaving. Commander Shepard, I'm Comm Specialist Samantha Trainer with Alliance R&D. I was part of the team retrofitting the Normandy after you turned it over to the Alliance. There weren't many of us aboard when the Reapers hit. Inquisitor! Hello there! So I, I was aware that um, the the British female voice actress for um, the, the Inquisitor was in Mass Effect 3. I was aware that that was where she started working with Bioware. I didn't know which character though. Hello there! Um, yeah, like, it, it's all good. 
Slow down, specialist trainer. You're doing fine. Thank you. I worked in a lab. I never thought I'd be serving on a ship. Why don't you tell me about the retrofits? The ship's in line with Alliance regs now, and it has new, top-of-the-line, quantum entanglement communicators. In fact, Admiral Anderson had intended to use the Normandy as his mobile command center. That's no longer an option. Yes, I heard he chose to stay and fight. I in any event, I'm honored to serve under you, Commander. For as long as you need me, that is. They only sent me here to oversee the retrofits. Shepard, some of our systems require further testing, and Specialist Trainer has been extremely effective during installation. I would prefer that she remain. Got it, Edie. Oh, wait, since when does a virtual intelligence make requests? Edie's an AI. Fully self-aware. Oh, I knew it. I knew Joker was lying. Jeff requested that I pretend to be a simple VI to protect myself. I apologize for the deception. Thanks, E.D., and I apologize for all those times I talked about how... attractive your voice was. Anyway, shall I give you a tour? I think you'll be impressed by the new upgrades. In the CIC, you'll find the galaxy map where you can set the Normandy's destination. You can also check your messages at your private terminal. The War Room houses a strategic command center for mission-specific intel and war analysis. The shuttle bay contains an armory where you can modify your equipment between missions. Finally, Liara has set up a lot of hardware down in the old XO office on Deck 3. I think she's claimed that room. And there you are. Still the same ship as before, it just flies Alliance colors now. Speaking of which, I believe Admiral Hackett would like to speak to you at the VidCon. Commander, Udina updated me on your meeting with the Council. Sounds like they're running scared. Oh, I... H hello. Just, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my, my lesbian radar started going off. It started going haywire and I'm just like, hello, hello, madam. Um, oh, let's, let's not be thinking about that for right now. Naomi, Naomi is dealing with Liara. Like, Naomi is in no mood for romance. People are dying. People are dying and the council are useless. The council's been a pain in my ass from day one. I'm done with them. Then what's your plan? I'm trying to get the Turian Primarch for a summit meeting with the Asari and Salarians. I'll bypass the council and appeal directly to their leadership. That's good, I like it. This is where we start laying the groundwork for our counterattack. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot to back it up right now. Then build alliances. Gather everything and everybody you can for the cause. What about the Prothean device? Find me people who can help build it, and if you can't, I'll take ships, soldiers, supplies, whatever you can get. We need to keep hitting the Reapers across every theater of war they open. Buy us time to figure out the device. And when it's finished? Assuming it ever is, we pool all our resources. Think of it as a giant armada for delivering the device, when the Reapers are most vulnerable. The stronger you can make that armada, the better the chances of punching through. Mm. Yeah, and how, how is Earth doing? What about Earth, sir? We'll just have to hope Anderson and what's left of the Alliance forces can hold out until we've dealt with the enemy. I understand. Good. Then make it happen, Commander. I'll be expecting regular updates on your progress. Hack it out. Oh, and hello. Hello, I presume I can now explore. Oh my, do we have... We do have a map of the ship. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, so we ha down at the bottom, we have the shuttle bay with James and Lieutenant Cortez. That name does not ring a bell. Okay. Then we have engineering with Engineer Adams. And okay, so this is also where Diana Allers is in over here. Okay. Then the crew deck. So yeah, Liara has taken over um, Miranda's space. And Chuck Tra Tra crosses there. Where else would she be? Okay. And then the kick. I know they call it the CIC. It's easier for me to say kick. It's faster. 
Okay, and this this is where I am. So the the Vidcom War Room. So yeah, they they have they have properly changed things up. This so this is um this was the science area, and over here was oh god Jacob Space, and it was the um the the little room where you could contact the elusive man. Okay, yeah, I think I think Naomi would be happy that you know changes have been made to this ship the, the line like oh it's still the same old ship now i was like <laughs> grumble grumble um yeah but this it is the same old ship it was built by cerberus but it is our spoil of war it is ours now we have made changes we have painted it in alliance blue as a as a fuck you to the elusive man and then this is us with the fish tank Ah, oh, wonderful, wonderful. But what became of our fish? That's that's a thought. What became of our fish? Um, oh god, I feel, I I feel. Oh god, I'm just. We we now have we now have a new area to explore. Part of me is like I should go in order. I should start at the top and make my way down. Um. Okay. War assets. The people, weapons, armies, and fleets that you've accumulated are your war assets. The overflow readiness of the galaxy determines how effectively these assets will perform in the final battle. Okay, so this is our minimum, but obviously we don't we don't really want to leave it at the minimum. We want to try and get this as high as we possibly can. Okay, the alliance. Oh. Okay, so we have the Alliance Engineering Corps. The Alliance Engineering Corps cuts roads through mountains and builds bases on asteroids. While the bulk of the AEC has active wartime duties, their brightest are helping build a device of Prothean origin recovered on Mars. Due to the staggering amount of raw materials raw materials required, the AEC has been given unprecedented emergency funds for any Alliance resources that will not interfere with the deployment of troops. We have the 103rd Marine Division. The old saying, every Marine is a rifleman, still holds true in the Alliance. Every Marine enlistee, from clerk to sniper, goes through a period of infantry training. As a result, the 103rd Marine Division is Earth's largest collection of Special Forces soldiers. Officers from notable battles such as the Skillian Blitz and the First Contact War run harsh training exercises in a variety of environments, insisting that Marines be prepared to storm any beach or on any planet. This training has been useful in the Reaper War, as a 103rd can be fighting in an Arctic desert one week, crawling through jungles the next. Then we have the First Fleet, which is only 65, but still, and then we have Diana Alice with only 5, but like, hey, every little helps. The first fleet was stationed near the Charon Relay when the Reapers invaded the Sol system. By the time Admiral Hackett issued the order to retreat, its size, once the largest in the Alliance Navy, had been cut by half. Commanding Admiral Inez Lindholm made the painful decision to use a tenth of the fleet's remaining vessels as cover so the remainder could escape. Her gamble paid off as the first fleet limped out of the Relay to rally with the rest of the Alliance forces on the run. Updated. This fleet lost a third of its vessels protecting the Council during the Battle of the Citadel two years ago. Unfortunately, the Alliance did not have the time to rebuild the fleet to its previous strength before the Reapers invaded. So, okay, so because we saved the, the Council, this isn't as powerful as it should be. Okay, I like that. The Third Fleet. Stationed at Tauras, the Third Fleet is headed by Admiral Nitesh Singh. When the Reapers came for the station, Singh had already pulled his command ship, the SSV Logan, back to an ideal firing position for its mass accelerator cannons. The Dreadnought's guns managed to slow down and destroy it before it could demolish the Third Fleet, but Singh was forced to retreat in the face of overwhelming opposition from the Reapers. Updated. This fleet lost a third of its vessels protecting the Council during the Battle of the Citadel two years ago. Unfortunately, the Alliance did not have the time to rebuild the fleet to its previous strength before the Reapers invaded. And the Fifth Fleet. The Fifth Fleet became famous across the galaxy after spearheading Alliance forces at the Battle of the Citadel. It was guarding Arcturus Station when the Reapers attacked. After a bloody and desperate battle, Admiral Hackett gave the order to retreat, sacrificing the entirety of the Alliance's second fleet to give the third and fifth the chance to escape. 
The Fifth Fleet's engineers are busy repairing its damaged vessels, grimly anticipating a return to Earth and revenge against the Reapers. Updated, this fleet lost a third of its vessels protecting the Council during the Battle of the Citadel, and the Alliance didn't um, update them to their previous strength. Diana Allers. Alliance News Network reporter Diana Allers has been broadcasting from the Normandy, interviewing crew members and high-ranking Alliance officers to give the galaxy an insider's view of the war. Alliance Frigate Normandy SR2. When the original SSV Normandy was destroyed, Cerberus rebuilt the ship from stolen Alliance plans. Dubbed the SR2, the Alliance took the new Normandy apart and refitted some of its systems with new technology of its own. As a result, the SR2 Normandy is the highest performing frigate in the entire Alliance Navy, and possibly the fastest ship by its class. The Normandy is commanded by Shepard, an Alliance officer and humanity's first spectre. Updated. To bolster the Normandy's firepower, Commander Shepard installed a Thanix magnetic hydrodynamic cannon on the ship's undercarriage. Based on Reaper technology, the powerful weapon fires molten metal accelerated to a fraction of the speed of light. Updated. Before taking on the Collectors, Commander Shepard reinforced the Normandy superstructure with Solaris armor. This protective layer of carbon nanotube sheeting can withstand temperatures that would instantly vaporize more conventional armor. And updated, the Normandy has been upgraded with cyclonic barrier technology, allowing the ship's mass effect field projectors to fire rapidly oscillating barriers that deflect rather than directly than directly absorb kinetic shocks. I don't know why I'm stumbling over my words. I'm, I'm gonna take a sip. One second. And I realise that I am all out of water. Boo. Boo. And I'm out of Diet Pepsi as well. God damn it. God damn it. I did not come into this recording session prepared. Um, but yeah, what I was going to say. So, okay. So the Alliance took the new Normandy apart. As I said before, 100% Naomi spent some of her mineral wealth on making sure that the Normandy wasn't bugged. So I, I reckon she probably had that done and then she returned to the Alliance and they took it apart and this, that and the other. Yeah, I, I reckon that's probably the timeline. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. There was a reason we did all that. Mineral resources. Commander Shepard uncovered significant elemental deposits while scanning planets with the Normandy SR2. When the Alliance dry docked the Normandy, they seized all recovered elements. This material surplus has gone toward building the Prothean device discovered on Mars. Excellent. And Kalisa Bint Sinan Al Jilani. Westerland news reporter Kalisa Bint Sinan Al Jilani reached out recently to her viewers with a wartime plea for unity and cooperation among all galactic species. Updated. Her sincerity touched extra viewers and donations for war relief efforts are pouring in both to the Alliance and its alien allies. Excellent. Excellent. Fantastic. Now again, I... Now I have a small panic as I explore this new area. <laughs> I got used to the, to the SR2. I got used to it and y'all don't have any gossip. How dare much offense. Okay, yeah, and this, this brings a hello. Oh, oh uh, one of our models. Okay. Okay, so I, I guess they're just going to be littered around the ship. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah, we, we must try and find them all. Yeah, okay. But yeah, this this was the science area. I can't believe the council won't help. Come on, Sierra. If Thestia was lost and Earth hadn't been touched yet, you could be damn sure we'd be guarding our own borders. I mean, that... That is the thing. That is the thing. That's why I find it somewhat understandable. It's still a dick move, but I can understand why they'd be doing this. Oh my god, look at it. Look at it and- Commander, the Alliance has found a new Cerberus lab on Sanctum. Admiral Hackett would like you to investigate. Oh, I absolutely can. 100% I can do that. Oh, it's it's good to see that we've had a replacement for Kelly. Naomi, Naomi never really took to Kelly. 
she was so obviously pro Cerber, so yeah, I, I think she's gonna get along with Trainer a lot better. Uh, now, you know what? You know what? I am just about out of time for this episode, so in the next one, we will explore the Normandy proper. You know what? Let's, before I forget, let's read some codex entries. When humanity, when humanity won a position on the Council for its part in defending the Citadel, the Alliance chose Captain David Anderson for the position. Udina became his advisor. Anderson eventually quit over frustrations with Council politics, and the Alliance named Udina to the office. Uh, excuse me, you, you appear not to have... First. The home world and when humanity won a position yeah, that, that is weird. for its part in defending the citadel that the is Alliance very weird and david anderson for the position udina became his advisor anderson eventually quit over frustrations with council politics and the alliance named udina to the office how odd that it's not reading the entire thing and um, so at, le at least we get some answers so anderson quit he quit because he was frustrated. Yeah, that that makes that makes so much sense. Donald Udina is the lone human on the Citadel Council. Although he has a keen ability for furthering his own political career, Udina has long promoted humanity's interests first and foremost in the galactic arena. Despite his unwavering focus on human interests, Councillor Udina is usually willing to collaborate with other species. Even his opponents concede that Udina gives fair consideration to non-human proposals, so long as humanity also benefits. Admiral, Steve Admiral Stephen Hackett is a decorated officer in the Systems Alliance, currently assigned to Arcturus Station on the far side of the Sol Relay. In the battle for the Citadel, Admiral Hackett commanded the 5th Fleet. Following that victory, he was promoted to head of the Alliance military. Hackett was born to a single mother in Buenos Aires in 2134. When his mother died in the pandemic of 2146, he was placed in the Advanced Training Academy for Juveniles, where his superior talents in science and leadership quickly became evident. Hackett enlisted in 2152, volunteering for high-risk missions to colonize space beyond the Sol Relay. He was commissioned as a second lieutenant on Arcturus Station in 2156, and soon proved his ability in the first contact war. His rare ascent from enlisted man to admiral remains an alliance legend. Nice. Nice. Hackett. Hackett seems like a good dude. I've never gotten bad vibes from Hackett. And then finally, oh, one of my favorite characters, Anderson. Admiral David Edward Anderson is a career military officer in the Systems Alliance Navy. Born in London in 2137, he later moved to Arcturus Station and became the first graduate of the Alliance's now renowned N7 Marine program. Anderson is one of the Alliance's most decorated Special Forces operatives and served with honor during the First Contact War. He was the original captain of the SSV Normandy before relinquishing command to his XO, Commander Shepard. After the Alliance victory in the Battle of the Citadel, Anderson briefly served as the Citadel's first human counselor. He soon became embroiled in a Cerberus plot to abduct his friend Kaylee Sanders, however, and learned that he was unable to live a life without action. He stepped down as counselor and returned to the military to prepare for the Reaper invasion. The Alliance Parliament named Donald Udina as his successor. Hold the fuck up! He's British? I would never have guessed- Oh, okay! Okay, fair doofs! I, I guess they must have a, a lot of Americans on Arcturus. Where was it? Um, yeah, he later moved to Arcturus Station. See, I, I guess... I, I guess there must be a lot of Americans there and he picked up the accent. But he's British! Oh my god! He's one of us! Hey! Nice, Anderson! Nice! Excellent! Oh, I... I what is this? What is this? I, I know that Mass Effect does have, um, you know, it has other materials. I, I believe there's a comic book. I would assume there are also novels. So I'm going to assume this is touched on in, in one of the, um, in, in one of them. But, okay, that's interesting. So yeah, yeah, it, it was a case of he got frustrated with the lack of, the lack of action. 
And he had to step down. Okay. Okay, very interesting. But that's all for today. So please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.